channel and uh, I also have a, a little bit history with the IGDA so I've uh, been uh, involved over 10 years now and then the, the uh, previous chair of IGDA Finland and also uh, previous chair of IGDA org. But uh, so yeah we have a beautiful set of panelists tonight. Uh, let's go a little bit uh, so we have uh, Natasa Skult uh, well, calling from uh, Turku, Finland. Uh, Natasa is uh, the current chair of ITD Finland uh, and a newly elected board member on ITD Org. Uh, and and uh, also a hub lead in Turku, if I remember correctly. Uh, well, That's there. right. Okay. And uh, then we have uh, Ria Günther. Uh, Ria uh, is uh, also well ac active on on ITD activities. Uh, one of the uh, ITD Finland board members and the hub lead of uh, ITD Finland Lahti Hub. Uh, and then uh, we also have uh, Sampo Tuisku uh, calling from Helsinki, Finland. Uh, Sampo is also a board member on ITD Finland and the hub lead on Helsinki uh, ITD Hub. But to do this properly, uh, I guess uh, also uh, on the uh, on the on the, uh, the previous information, uh, we're supposed to have uh, uh, Doctor uh, Ernest Adams uh, here on the panel. Uh, but uh, so something came up. Uh, so let's see if we can get uh, Doctor Adams uh, later on on this discussion. But uh, okay, let's do this properly. Okay, let's let's get a, like a proper introduction. So, uh, question to you: Can you tell a little bit about yourself? Um, you know, uh, what have you been working in the industry, and and uh, what have you done in ITDA or what do you do? And uh, so, can we start from Natasha? All right, no problem. So. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Natasha Skuld and thank you so much for having me here and Vesa for organizing this panel uh, together with uh, Game Break conference. Uh, so, um, so yeah, about myself. I'm a workaholic, uh, as you might have noticed from all my activities around. Um, uh, my background is uh, in, in classical arts, uh, officially. Uh, including academic work and um, PhD studies in art history and museology. Um, but I have been um, also doing digital art parallel to all the classical art uh, and doing the game art has been pretty much in any style. I've mainly focused on 2D because of the amount of things. That's my preference, but of course, pretty much can do anything needed, uh, including animation for it. Uh, so that's how I was, um, besides my work in art and, and art theory, uh, I have been, uh, because I have been also doing a lot of things with art forgeries and studying them and working with, for example, uh, Vanta Police Forgery Museum, which is an incredible place. But how does this come to games is that, well, I'm a hardcore gamer, always have been, my whole family is gamers, including my parents. So I grew up with games and they are a huge part of who I am. So. Uh, in, in Finland, uh, I moved to Finland uh, about 13 years ago. So basically, um, besides my, my work in the art field uh, and through digital art, I started quite soon to work through my own studio as a freelancer for various studios and so on. So I have been first working in that sense and, um, and then joined more into the teamwork because Working as an artist can be quite solitary as a freelance so, or, or in your own studio. And I need people to challenge me and my thoughts. So uh, I decided then fully to switch the games industry and here I am. So IGDA for me, I mean, uh, first of all, as, as my role currently in as being a chair of IGDA Finland and also newly appointed board member of IGDA Global, uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, I really love the work we do here and Finland is doing incredible job uh, not just locally but also with our relationship and network uh, internationally so I'm really proud of, of our team um, and what we have achieved throughout the, uh, all these years so it's it's really uh, overwhelming sort of to be uh, in, in this position um, when it comes to HDA Finland because it's so close to my heart um, so in my case 
it happened a little bit kind of how I got involved with the IGDA, a little bit kind of uh, other way around, because usually people, if they start looking into the industry, um, how to step in, then they kind of first start through community and getting to know people and that sort of way, My and then get the job kind of in the industry. Uh, my way was other way around. I, I was working in the industry and then I got more involved with the community. Um, and the community in Finland is extremely unique. So this is something that uh, we will definitely talk about today. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I think I'll stop now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we, go, we, we go deeper on the, the community part later on. So um, the same question to you, Ria Günther. Okay, so hi, I'm Ria Günther. I come from Lahti. Uh, at the moment, I work as a project manager in Lab University of Applied Sciences. Um, the way I got into the game industry, my previous career is actually as academic librarian. I worked, I think, 12 years in academic library field and um, I was doing my uh, studies in the University of Tampere and in the library sciences. And then there was this point when you needed to choose what do you want to do your master's in which field. And uh, I found out that you can actually study game studies. I was like, what? I can do my master's in game studies? Is this really something people can study? This is so awesome. And that was kind of like the start uh, around three years ago. Since that, I've moved to work with projects. And my first project was uh, Game Changers. In that project, we wanted to increase the diversity in the Finnish gaming industry. And we were actually quite successful in that two year project. And uh, right in the be beginning of the project, uh, I was sent to Helsinki to visit IGDA monthly meets up there. And I was totally blown away about the community and about all the people and how open and ready to help everyone were. So now at the moment, I'm the founder and lead of ICTA Hub here in Lahti and new board member in ICTA Finland. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ria. And uh, Sampo Toisku, same question. All right. Um, uh, well, I'm, I'm pretty much a freshman to the Finnish gaming industry still. Uh, I've been a part of IGDA for a while um, as a volunteer. Uh, I'm currently studying uh, video game programming. I've always been a hardcore kit gamer as well, like Natasha uh, said. Um, always loved games and, you know, at some people are always like, what are you going to be when you grow up? Well, I don't know. I, I like games, so I guess that makes sense. So f through that, I went to uh, study video game programming and then I got involved with ID IGDA right from the beginning of my studies, actually. So I've been in... in in the IGDA, maybe almost four years now, starting as a as a volunteer, and now I've been uh, leading the IGDA Helsinki uh, hub and managing the events, and you know, uh, working with my team, uh, great creating amazing events every month, monthly for for the community here in Helsinki. Uh, it's been a really nice ride, and uh, yeah, looking forward to some more adventures. All right, thank you, Sambo. Okay, so. Uh... These are the lovely people we have here tonight. Uh, uh, actually, uh, if we have uh, you know new viewers here, uh, could we go through a little bit uh, like uh, like overall the I IGDA uh, activity? So, what is IGDA and what IGDA is doing? So, uh, maybe Natasha, you could uh, give a short uh, description. Uh, do you mean IGDA in general or well, I, IGDA in general? Well, uh, let, let, let's start from the IGDA in general and, and, uh, and then, then hop on the, the, the like Finnish part because there's like a lot of uh, little differences. So let's, you know, start from the uh, beginning. Absolutely. So from the IGDA uh, side, as, as, as its name says, International Game De Developers Association, uh, it, it functions globally. So with all of these uh, chapters and special interest groups or SIGs um, are key, key points for IGDA success. Uh, so what it actually means in practice, and especially when people think like, what, what, what does it do and, and how does it work? Um, one of the biggest values 
uh, value of IGDA is um, the community. And community, which is not just, um, it functions through these chapters on a local level, wherever that chapter is, but it connects to this global kind of family of, uh, uh, you know, network of, of fellow minded people where all of these kind of differences and, and you know, let's say borders disappear <laughs> between between us because we are all um, on the same page. There is no sort of like uh, who is from where, with from what background and so on. Everyone who is, uh, everyone is most welcome to be part of the community. And as Ria pointed out in her, like it's, it's incredibly beautiful to be, to feel so welcomed. Um, especially like when you, you know, when you first think like, am I even good enough? Can I even like be, or, or at the conference, you see some of maybe your, uh, you know, like idols out there from the games industry. And then you realize that through IGDA and all these uh, various programs that we have, for example, IGDA Mentor Cafe, which is uh, taking place usually as a part of uh, established events like conferences or uh, meetups and so on. Um, but also now we have them virtually, like online, uh, regardless of, of uh, uh, conferences. So, so there will be more of these activities. Uh, so you can meet literally all of like uh, people from the industry from various kind of uh, <laughs> higher uh, kind of positions and, and more experience as w when it comes to years um, and talk to them, like literally uh, get the mentoring, get the, um, you know, feedback on your game, get the feedback on your, for example, how to break into the industry or a very specific maybe issue that you might need for, let's say, regarding design of your game or anything like that. So so this is this is absolutely priceless. Um, uh, so, and then the, so besides this sort of like being part of something much bigger, uh, there are so many different things that IGDA can provide for the individual as much as the company. So this is something that is really unique and brings additional value, uh, to the, uh, being a member and being part of this community. Um, because for example, besides the sort of, there are obviously various discounts and things that are available, but then also there is the whole IGDA foundation, uh, which also supports um, uh, various uh, um, programs and especially for students, young developers, indie developers, um, uh, let's say free tickets to GDC, including the travel and everything. like there's so many things that one can be part of. And above all, being very, um, very, very um, active in providing this sort of support for developers. Uh, for example, just a week ago or so, there was uh, in collaboration with Take This, there was the one day conference to about, you know, well-being and mental health issues and, and how, how to especially cope in this current situation and so forth. So there is so much uh, that is happening uh, worldwide and, um, and it happens through these local chapters. So this is where I we, I guess- interrupt you for a moment? Uh, <clears throat> actually, yeah. the, the one question. We, we've been talking about these hubs now. So uh, the, what, what is IGDA hub? Yeah, so IGDA hub, uh, at least this is something that here in Finland, I think we were the first one to officially establish hub uh, because IGDA Finland is a chapter. Uh, first, it was obviously in Helsinki, but then after some years of, of um, activities which showed very soon that there is need since there are so many developers outside obviously of Helsinki and so on so um, there was need to actually create uh, more kind of smaller um, uh, fractions of our chapter uh, where obviously IGDA Finland supports all of these hubs in all the major cities in Finland that also include, uh, usually they're as well having, for example, um, uh, game education, as Ria pointed out. Uh, so there are those like various programs that again, with our um, collaboration with the local partners, uh, we make even, even more opportunities for young developers. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was a <clears throat> very uh, good, good uh, description of the uh, ICD activities. And and uh, well, you know, uh, tonight we are mostly talking about the, the fin Finnish level uh, here. And also, uh, if the uh, the viewers have questions, uh, you can uh, put them on the chat, 
and then I'll, I'll pick them up uh, when we have a, a good good uh, spot for that. So uh, so many, many many things are happening. So uh, there's uh, well networking, uh, mentoring, uh, well well uh, me meetups and uh, so on. So uh, next question is uh, for your all about because uh, well I, I think yeah, it's a it's a it's a volunteer based association. So uh, we actually went a little bit through that already. But uh, the quest question: uh, So what what motivates you uh, to do? Like you know, you all have a you know day job or studies or things like that. And I know that working with ITDA on this level, it's a, it's a lot of work. So what keeps you going? Why do you like ITDA work? <laughs> Why do you do this yourself? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, can we start like uh, from Ria? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I already mentioned that in the beginning of my career in the game industry or in game industry re related projects and things like that, I received so much help from the community. Uh, so this is kind of like I want to uh, give back for all the awesomeness that I got from the industry. And uh, here in Lahti, we have only one game company, but we have uh, tens and tens of people who are interested in the industry and who have relevant uh, skills, who have their own hobby groups, they are doing their own indie projects, but they are kind of like, mm, not maybe, mentally ready to go to Helsinki and show everyone else their games or for they have some blocks they don't think that they are good enough and um, for me I've seen the uh, community for a few years and I know that you are good enough you just need to be brave and you need to believe in yourself and you need to kind of like hear someone else say those things to you so funding the IGDA hub in Lahti is kind of like one of the ways to say people working with games here, that yes, you are good enough, you are part of the international community and what you do has value, even though you don't make millions yet, but you are on your way to the greatness. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like uh, giving back what I've got, um, encouraging new people to take the step and to fulfill their dreams okay. in entering the game industry and helping them uh, maybe to network or find the right people or channels. As Natasha mentioned, IGDA has loads of different hubs here in Finland and um, also Discord channels for different kind of like focus groups. So if you are into art, you can talk about game art with hundreds of people around the world in the Discord channel. Or if you are interested in some other special thing, we can provide you the access to that community and to reach those other people doing that. Mm -hmm. And I believe that in kind of like together we are more than we are without each other. So, yeah. Good words, good words. Uh, Sambo, so what, what uh, drives you in, in ITDA? Well, um, uh, I've always, when when I joined IGDA, I, I saw that there's a lot of people, you know, talking to each other. There's hundreds of people gathering up every month. And that, that was really, really weird to me, like, um, and really nice to see. But I, I thought that that's like a regular thing for every, every country out there. But I, I kept hearing about, you know, that Finland is a very, very uh, special country in a way that people actually do gather up every month and, you know, share it, share, share ideas, talk to each other, get help from each other. Um, but this is and what I learned is that this is not something that is regular. We so, this is something that has been built um, and this is something that needs to be maintained uh, in order to have it continue for in the future as well. So this is kind of something that I wanted to uh, start working on and, you know, maintaining this this kind of a community and this kind of a culture and this a, a place for people to gather and, you know, share ideas. So I want to keep it up, kind of, you know, take some responsibility of the people who have been doing it for years and years now uh, and, you know, 
help out um, pushing this thing forward and keeping it alive because this is something that needs to be maintained otherwise it'll it'll go away so that's kind of been something that um, that motivates me to uh, uh, stay uh, work work with IGDA and you know uh, be a part of this this community um, also I, it has been amazing to for me as such a kind of a up and comer uh, still still in my studies I've been I've had the chance to work with uh, multiple uh, companies here in Helsinki on arranging the events at, here here uh, at, with IGDA. Uh, I've gotten I've learned so much uh, from from different developers and you know from everybody. It's just been such a big learning curve for me, and that kind of is has been something that really motivates me to work uh, with IGDA. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, really, really good to hear. Uh, Natasha, uh, do you want to add? Uh, you already mentioned many, many things, but uh, do you want to like specify more of you know, the... I, I can maybe share what made me fall in love with IGDA oh, Finland. Please do. Uh, so my very first, I don't remember how many years ago that was. So it's many moons ago when I went to IGDA Finland meetup for my first time. Um, and when I fell in love with this whole whole uh, thing here that we have, uh, was the fact that all these events uh, that are taking place uh, across Finland, but <clears throat> particularly in Helsinki, because those are the biggest one that, that we have. I mean, we have hundreds of people actually monthly gathering there. Um, and the beauty of, what, uh, of it is that these events are, first of all, they're free, Everyone is welcome, regardless of your member or not. Uh, so just come meet other people. And there is always fascinating program with the different uh, um, guests, speakers, and so on uh, being present. But and also demo demo corner, which is so good to to check out what people are making. But for me, what was really fascinating was the the fact that the moment people enter, like past that line of kind of like entering to the event all the titles, all the differences, who is what, CEO of what, who, who made how many <laughs> millions or, or not made at all, or maybe had bankrupt company, doesn't matter. Everyone is equal in, in the eyes of organizers and in the eyes of association. Uh, so that's where all these differences disappear when it goes. So everyone chats among each other, you know, like students, veterans who have been in the industry for, you know, almost 30 years. This, so it, that sort of, feeling of being part of that was something that just blew my mind and I completely fell in love with. So that that's what sparked that part. Like I, I want to, as Sampo said, be part of this to make this, to keep this, to keep this extremely valuable thing that we have here. Yeah, good, good. Uh, so uh, I got the, there's a, well, yeah, there's a, 100 and around 120 chapters on the world so uh, and every chapter works uh, a bit differently uh, actually some some funny facts uh, of uh, IGDA Finland uh, on, on this point so uh, currently uh, like IGDA Finland has been around uh, 15 years uh, so, so something like that and uh, there's a uh, over 2000 paid members uh, uh, in the, in, in the, the fin Finnish chapter and uh, there's uh, so there's 13 hubs, so 13 uh, different cities uh, where there's activity uh, ha happening, and uh, well, mostly well, monthly, and and uh, and uh, so uh, yeah, around 100 volunteers uh, working uh, just only in in the Finnish IGD chapter. So that is uh, you know huge, uh, big numbers, and uh, saying a lot of about the community. So, but you know, the, like as the activity, uh, this is actually my favorite question. Uh, what I what I like to uh, like hear, uh, do you have some stories uh, or like funny incidents or, or so, so, so something uh, what has happened on your uh, history, uh, like uh, working or being involved with IGDA? So, is there like a you know memorable event? And uh, let's go. Let's start from uh, Sambo. Um, memorable event. Uh, I've been a part of many, many things during my time at IGDA. Uh, 
from game jams, helping and organizing to uh, uh, there was a game jam on an island, which was super cool for like three days, just hanging out on an island, helping people out. And, you know, during the summer, it was amazing. Uh, but one of some of the coolest things that I've been a part of was uh, I've been a part of the Finnish Game Awards a couple of times. Uh, it's, it's been really cool. I've been, you know, the one handing out the awards, uh, just smiling and handing out the awards. I think that was really fun and cool. It was very nerve wracking, but it was that was that was really fun. Um, got to meet you know some of the best best game uh, developers in in Finland, pretty much. Uh, got to speak with them and you know get their stories on different things, and you know that that was really cool. Uh, so I think that that that's some uh, like one of my top top things. Okay. <clears throat> Good, uh, Ria. Do you have uh, some some something you wanna share from from the history? Well, I think founding the IGDA Hub here in Lahti has most definitely been the highlight of my uh, kind of like IGDA life. Um, it was so funny. Um, I kind of like was thinking that it will take a lot of time. But then I approached Natasha and in that point we had already been uh, working in the community here in Lahti for around two years, I think. We had um, steady meetups, not monthly based, but I think a, in every three months and we had good uh, turnout. I think we had like 20 to 40 people to each of our meetups. Um, and yeah, then I asked around, like, what do I need to set this up? And people said that go talk to Vesa or Natasha. And we were uh, in one conference. Uh, I approached them and as Natasha said she might be a little bit of a workaholic but she's also a person who gets things done like super effectively so I think it took like maybe 20 minutes <laughs> uh, she was so like kind of like ask this 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 okay you have this 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 do this 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 and then suddenly I'm like okay I just found it an IGDA hub <laughs> But I well, had to point it. Yes, and we had Be been careful working... what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and I have to say that we had been working in the area already, so it wasn't just like I woke up one day and decided that we want this. It's not even though in Finland we already have thir thirteen hubs. It's not kind of like you just say that you want something and it will happen. You need to do something before that but in the actual process of doing that it wasn't kind of like prove yourself in many many ways it was like okay i see what you've done and we can move on this will be good and yeah it has but been awesome just to add but you did prove yourself i mean you did already have everything set so this yes, was just yes. basically this was the easiest case of creating the, the hub in that sense because you already uh developed so much so we just only had to like and and now obviously later on uh, support you in any way your local community needs but yeah that's yeah. all I, I think that's my librarian background we yep. are very organized yes yes <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's my excuse. Natasha, something comes to your, to your mind uh, like you know I have way too many, like very big top ten weird and no, well, yeah. Three. Uh, but I will. Uh, there is one thing that occurs every now and then, and this is something that really warms my heart. So I'm just gonna generally say that um, by and and this is something that I think Ria also already mentioned uh, at, at the gatherings uh, or or meetups or whichever events we have, uh, even if it's just part. I mean, part of certain conference and so on. So when we meet developers, especially young, younger generation students or just graduated or from, you know, trying to get to even from the different disciplines, but want to switch their careers into games. Um, and for example, they show portfolio or they want any assistance with this sort of uh, kind of guidance um, by simply being honest and giving this guidance. Uh, quite many people are now working in prestige companies in, in Helsinki, like, you know, Remedy, Rovio, and so on. And then uh, actually 
they got inspired by these events and these things that we gave this sort of the support this sort of like moral support if nothing else um to to go forward with their dreams and this is something that for me is kind of memorable that that stays with me all of these little dots kind of uh they they are all marked uh within so so this is for me the most memorable thing same with the, the sort of demo games when you you know i remember for example was it uh uh hills of steel which is one of the hits now in finland uh we were in the same demo tables when when Kale was presenting the first demo so that's the thing from the from this sort of demo from the corner now it's international hit game and that is absolutely mind-blowing mm, 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 mm. that's uh good to hear uh <clears throat> actually uh, i don't know uh, can you all see the chat uh what do we have I think uh, we could uh, pop on a bit the side topic here. Uh, Jason Miller uh, writes from Canada uh, that that uh, they have a ITD chapter, uh, but uh, they feel a bit uh, isolated. So uh, actually, on that topic, because uh, um, I know ITD Finland uh, is like uh, well. Uh, doing a lot of like collaborations uh, with with uh, different associations and other chapters. Uh, is there is there something uh, uh, you you like to share that uh, what what all the things are happening like you know uh, inside Finland or like you know outside and is there like something uh, you know we could uh, work with uh, with the, the Canadian uh, chapters? That's a broad question. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so who wants to start? Uh, I think I can go because um, I'm from the newest hub and the smallest, uh, not actually the smallest. It's not a competition. But um, kind of like, <laughs> it, yeah, it's not a competition. <laughs> but uh, compared to uh, Helsinki hub that Sambo is running and Tampere hub, uh, Turku hub that Natasha is running, um, in Lahti, we don't have our kind of like rock stars yet. We don't have the big companies to invite to visit. So we utilize the network that we have in Finland with the IGDA. So first we kind of like, um, we've invested in our own small community. Like what do they need? How can we provide that? And then we've talked with other hubs and other IGDA actives and invited them in Lahti invited them into our discord channel and um, slowly from that the community starts to feel like they are part of uh, all the other communities in Finland so yeah start from your own little circle and then um, speak out that you are part of a bigger thing you are all Canadian game professionals or something like that. Yeah, and I'll uh, give the torch to Samba. Well, I mean, like you said that we've been, we work a lot together within Finland and of course outside of Finland as well, but there's people from all over Finland coming to our events at Helsinki, for example, we we provide bus rides. They come from all the way from Rovaniemi, which is like at the tip of the top of Finland. They come and demo their games here in Helsinki, and it's it's been great. People love it, and you know, that's that's what kind of grows the community. That hey, it's not only Helsinki; it's it's you know, it's Lahti, it's Turku, it's Rovaniemi, all the way up there. Uh, it's just you know, spreading the word and you know, uh, being together and working together on these things. Uh, with with IGDA, we we also have our um, volunteer get-togethers where we get all the volunteers from all over Finland, you know, get them together, you know, have fun, play some games and, you know, grow, grow their community through that as well. So that's that's something that we've been doing as well a lot. Um, also, uh, for example, I've been I, I helped at uh, the Nordic Game Conference. I was there last year uh, kind of helping out with them uh, on, on their their whole thing, you know, and it's just a lot yeah yeah so there's there's a lot of things that you can do and mm. you know grow the community so uh if i actually uh, can jump on this point because I, I i know that uh, uh you wear many hats uh you're involved and of course like uh, finland is a small country and a small community in that sense so uh like i i think like like some of you are 
like uh, also involved with like game jams and and th these kind of uh, like uh, uh, communities. So uh, what is like you know uh, what like other things you are you are doing and and to specify a question, uh, do you see that you can only you know be involved like one association or can you can you work in like mul multiple uh, multiple roles? And Natasha, for, for who? Yeah, let, for let's, me. Go, let's start oh. for you. Bad example, oh, yeah. bad example. Yes, for me, too many hats. Uh, that's why I started this year actually to throw some hats <laughs> oh. um, in order to, you know, like keep focus to exactly what. So, well, in my case, because I'm very passionate about education, always have been. So, this is something that I also have. Um, multiple hats there. Uh, so for example, I'm also part of uh, Finnish Game Developers Association or Suomen Pelinkehitat RU, uh, where now, uh, because Series Games Cluster has been uh, closed uh, and there is still, for example, huge need, obviously, because there's a lot of uh, Series Games companies here in Finland. So under the Finnish Game, De uh, Game Developers Association, uh, there is now the, the kind of department for uh serious games which i'm leading uh on behalf and uh so basically yes you can do quite a lot um i'm member otherwise of uh, women in games and um when it also finish uh, uh sorry the finnish game jam association um because i have been also organizing game jams here in turku for so many years um and also we found that uh, Hive, Turku Game Hub, four years ago uh, as a business center here in Turku to, to boost uh, local uh, gaming business in southwest Finland. And that has been growing steadily for the past four years and, and you know, going through, even with Corona. So, so uh, we, we were really, really uh, blessed with that. But, uh, but yeah, so definitely it's possible. What I would recommend if anyone wants to kind of like multitask this much uh, would be still keep the sort of focus and, and, um, and also as much of, uh, work on the things and accept the things that actually are first of all doable. And the second thing is that they're related. So it's, it's, so for me, it's really simple with all the same kind of network and people to work uh, with this sort of multiple things because it's part of my, my anyway, kind of daily activities regardless. Um, but yeah, definitely it's possible. And, and it helps a lot, again, building that trust among the community. So, yeah. So, uh, Sambo, Ria, um, you work uh, with uh, other, other fields on, on uh, well, uh, game, game, well, ecosystem as, as well. Uh, so, what, what are those things and, you know, and uh, are they, you know, well, uh, in in line with like uh, everything you do. Yeah, uh, with me, I kind of like um, I want to break the misconception that to work in game industry you need to be a certain type of person, mm -hmm. or you need to know how to code, or you cannot work there if you are like this or if you are like this. So kind of like I want to uh, promote the diversity uh, of skills and needs of the game industry and um, uh, with that I've kind of like ended up working closely with Women in Games Finland and uh, I'm also a board member in the Game Makers of Finland. That's actually the world's first um, union for people working in the game industry. Um, so those are kind of like a good balance for me and they um, kind of like help me to um, do what I'm passionate about and promote the things that I'm passionate about because game industry is for all of us. Thanks. Uh, Sambo, you want to add? Uh, well, um, wearing many hats, um, sometimes it feels like a bit too many, as Natasha is saying, that kind of trying to give out the hats to everyone else as well, um, especially when you're you're trying to study and you know you also got a job then you got IGDA, you're the board member, and then doing Helsinki stuff. Uh, and then also trying to, you know, do some hobbies as well uh, and play some video games. So there's a lot of things you have to have to, if, that you want to do, but you don't really have time to do. So 
in at IGDA, uh, I've gotten got, got a lot of heads, but I also have a great, great team around me uh, with all the volunteers here in Helsinki, all the coordinators here in Helsinki. I mean, I, I couldn't do it alone, not at all, and I'm not doing it alone. So with a great team, uh, it's really possible to do to do all this stuff. And even if if you don't have much of a team, there's still a lot you can do by yourself as well. So. It seems that uh, we got some extra time here, so we, we can uh, continue our, our uh, discussion. Actually, uh, one question: um, like we, we talk about like a lot of like ITDA work, but uh, what are you like actually doing? Uh, can you pinpoint some like tasks? So, uh, what does it need to set up like gathering or uh, or the other other things? What you what you're doing? So let, let's go like a little bit step by step. So you need to you know contact people and uh, you know uh, can can you sh- share like the practicalities a bit? That would be interesting. Uh, let's go with uh, Nalasa. All right. Um, so. Well, uh, how how to make an event? Well, first of all, how we do it, at least uh, in, in in Turku, I'll just <laughs> kind of focus on that, which I think is quite uh, common practice uh, across Finland. So basically, we first um, what we, we focus on the content. So that's the thing. Like, what do we want as a topic to have? Um, let's say this month, next month and so on. So slightly planning in advance together with a team of volunteers that are actually uh, working with me here in, in, in Turku. Um, and then we brainstorm. So we have our meetings, it can mostly online, but back in the day also, since we are in high vault, then we sit together, have coffee and brainstorm. So basically what kind of topics? And then uh, on these topics, we kind of decide, we think about who would be the best person to be a guest uh, or panelists like this, if we want to have a panel discussion or what kind of thing we want to have. And we try to uh, uh, have or kind of six months in advance, this sort of like a plan. Uh, uh, so basically two times a year, bigger meeting where we kind of set these topics. And then after that, uh, for each month, because things can happen, schedules can change. So basically the most important thing is that we uh, talk to, so once we know that the person that we approached uh, is available, willing, and so on. So it's all good. Uh, then we contact uh, the venue, which we usually uh, have. So, so we just found like when you find a good venue and you can establish this sort of partnership with them that you uh, want to have these monthly gatherings with them. And we have this one in Turku, which is Saris Tobari, incredible place, uh, which also allows all of these things with us with the demo corner and whatnot. And then uh, basically, that's that's when it comes to pre-setting the whole thing. So just communicating, a lot of communicating around, uh, and and again, no need face to face. Everything is done in distance. But then, event itself in practice would be uh, that we come slightly early, obviously, to set things up, make sure that all the equipment works and so forth. People start joining while they are, you know, getting drinks and so on because it's it's a bar restaurant place. So then we set up all for the uh, introducing the the guests and then comes the presentation and then it's the rest of it. It's it's mingling and networking. So in in essence, this is kind of how we do, uh, at least in Turku, which I believe it's quite similar also to Helsinki and Vlaski. But please do do tell how you guys uh, do. So uh, um, uh, can you, uh, do you have something to add of like, you know, what are you like, daily tasks of, uh, you know, with, uh, with, with this association, association work. Hello, let's go with Sambo. Sure. Um, so for, for, for us in Helsinki, I feel like it's the most important thing is that we have the monthly get, monthly meetups every month and a place where people get together and, you know, get to hang out no matter what company or what status you are. You, that's, there's a place you know that there is a place that you can come to and you know talk with friends and uh, have a beer uh that's that's the most important thing so having that uh is what we 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 do and also in in addition to that we try we, we try to provide uh as, as much as uh content for for the for the community so seminars uh 
we have different companies coming working with us during our events they talk about their process making a game for example any anything related to the gaming industry um so my daily tasks are there since we have a pretty well this is like we've been working on this for a long time so we have like a step step by step that we do do it here so we have a nice venue here in helsinki that we have booked every month which is really nice uh right in the center of helsinki um then what we do is if we're working on with a sponsor uh i'm i'm talking with the sponsor like hey uh what would you like to if there's something you would talk about what is it who is talking uh we get the information of the speakers we talk about the topics what they want to talk about uh what time it's going to be what time it's ending uh and all the all the practicalities during of, of that uh before the event as like as natasha said that we we go there before before the event starts itself set everything up set set all the technical stuff up uh arrange the seminar area um and get ready open the doors and have our you know volunteers take people in uh, and that and so on so it's it's very straightforward but when there's sponsors in, involved then of course that takes more time you know communicating stuff arranging stuff and so forth so that's that's kind of like my my daily process with with IGDA cool cool uh, Ria oh. yeah um i think in lahti with monthly meetups we have exactly the same kind of um uh, uh thing that we do as Helsinki and Turku. But uh, because we are a new hub, we are still kind of like finding the partners here. Uh, as I said, there's not that many game companies, but there are a lot of other um, players that are interested in what we do. And with many of them, we find things that we can do together. So in addition of our monthly meetups, we collaborate with the city library, the educational institutes, um, with uh, conferences that are held here. So we might have a game jam with uh, one place or uh, we've tried a kind of like um, game related reading circle with the library. We are helping one big conference next autumn to kind of like get more interesting substance uh, with the expertise that people making games have in the area and we are kind of like making a game for that conference and things like that. So in addition of working with the monthly meetups, there are a lot of other interesting things that you can do if you have time. And luckily I'm not alone in Lahti. There's four other awesome people working here. So we all have our passions and interests and um, we are utilizing those. Uh, yes. And and uh, actually, uh, I have some great news. Uh, uh, Dr. Ernest Adams uh, just joined us on the panel. Hello. Hello. Um, uh, and, uh, doesn't the, the panel starts in in ten minutes? Uh, actually, uh, we are we are live now. I think there was a hiccup with the time zones. So, uh, but anyways, we've been oh. uh, talking uh, talking here a bit about uh, well, the IGDA Finland and and uh what do we do here so uh on this point uh, actually so uh, introduction so uh dr ernest uh, adams uh call, calling from sweden uh he's uh, he, he's been a well a pioneer on the on the games industry and uh and uh, for like doing a lot of things in many decades and uh, a great influencer uh with the, with the IIGDA as as we know it uh, today so uh well actually uh well, Dr. Adams, uh, can you give a, a letter, <laughs> better introduction? <laughs> like, uh, who, who, who are you? Uh, what have you done? And how do you uh, been involved with IGDA? Yes, well, uh, um, uh, <laughs> let me begin by saying um, if if the, the talk started um, an hour ago, that's apparently there was a confusion between a GMT and British summertime. <laughs> Because GMT is is different from British summertime, so I think that's where the problem came. Yeah, no worries. Um, yes, so I am the founder of the IGDA. Um, I founded the IGDA in 1994 um, in uh, response initially to 
um, a political thing that was happening in the United States because I was working in the United States at the time and I was very unhappy that the United States Congress was threatening to censor uh, video games. And they were, the Congress was, the legislature of the United States was very um, upset about Nintendo's, and, and uh, well, the game Mortal Kombat. And they, um, uh, they thought that this was much too violent and um, uh, so on. And they called the game industry in to testify in front of Congress. And the industry did not do a very good job. <laughs> um, uh, Sega and Nintendo mostly just pointed their fingers at each other and said, those guys are responsible for the problem. <laughs> um, and I felt that uh, the game the game developers, not not the industry as a as an industry, but the individual developers needed a professional society to represent their interests in the world. And um, uh, I had already come from being a programmer in Silicon Valley, and I was used to other professional societies, uh, the Association for Computing Machinery and the Institute for um, Electrical and Electronics Engineers, which are major professional societies for those groups. And when I got into the game industry, I was surprised to discover that game developers had no professional society. So I, I felt strongly that 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 we should have one, both for all the reasons that you have a professional society, um, uh, continuing education and, you know, furthering the field and so on. But the initial um, reason was simply because we were uh, being threatened. <laughs> Our creative freedom was being threatened as artists, um, as craftsmen. And so, um, so I, I went to the people that owned the Game Developers Conference, which was completely separate, <laughs> um, a completely different organization. And I, and I said, um, I would like to set up a professional society for, for game developers to do all the things that professional societies do, uh, and I want some money. <laughs> and my, my colleague said, um, yes, that's okay. You can have some money, but you have to do all the work. So... <laughs> so um, so that was how the 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 initial the CGDA as we called it at first got started was to fight this political fight but i always had a long term idea that it would do all the things that you know that we would do that we would provide um uh you know information to uh, developers about how to improve their lives and their work and how to grow the craft and how to meet each other and now we have chapters around the world, and certainly IGDA Finland is one of the most uh, active and successful chapters. And I, it's grown into, you know, it's now been 25 years, um, and it's grown into something much more than I originally thought it would be, and that makes me very happy. Sorry, that's the, <laughs> uh, I've, that's the <laughs> sort of condensed version. Yeah, it's like it's it's re really nice to hear. Uh, the the that's like a thing. Uh, what isn't uh, I, I think uh, has has me talk talk about a lot. Uh, like you know the ITDA is now twenty five or twenty six years uh, being being uh, on, on the world, and and uh, so mold into you know a bigger uh, bigger movement if I, if I can say uh, on the uh, on, on these times. Uh, actually, uh, can I also ask, like, so, uh, what, what have you like uh, done done um, in the the games industry, uh, Dr. Adams? And uh, so, and uh, what's actually your current position? Sure. Um, well, I I started at first um, uh, in as a programmer in the electronics industry, making tools for for. Um, uh, electronics companies, but I always wanted to get into the game industry. So I changed to become a computer programmer first at a small company. And then um, after three years, I moved to electronic arts um, and I worked at electronic arts uh, and I was offered a chance to stop being a programmer and become a game designer. So, um, and I worked uh, for most of that time on EA sports. Uh, making uh, sports games of one kind and another, um, and especially uh, the sports game Madden NFL, which is an American football game. And of course, 
the Europeans don't <laughs> don't play American football and probably aren't that familiar with it. But that's that's Electronic Arts' most successful and largest sports game. Uh, so I worked for for Madden NFL for about six years, and then I moved to England to do something different. And so I moved to an office of Electronic Arts to work for um, uh, one of their studios, Bullfrog Productions. And I was there for a year. And then I lost my job and I began doing uh, freelance independent consulting and um, and training uh, people that wanted to hire me to uh, talk to them about game design. Uh, their companies would bring me in and I would consult on game design problems and I would also train their people. And um, and the, the training became more and more successful and lots and lots of people wanted me to, to do that. And I started being asked to teach at universities um, and so I traveled all over Europe, um, you know, going to conferences and giving uh, lectures and workshops and, and um, being sort of a guest professor at, at universities. And um, one in particular began asking me to come back so often um, that I kept coming back again and again. And this was, um, this was Hugskola på Gotland in, in Sweden, on the, on the island of Gotland between um, between Sweden and Estonia, and um, uh, and eventually, um, Hogskola for Gotland became Uppsala University campus Gotland, and I finally uh, decided, okay, this is what I will do. I uh, and and so um, I became a, a universitetslektor, as we say in in Swedish. Yeah. Actually, uh, sorry, I need to interrupt you for a moment. Uh, yes. Natasha needs to hop on uh, another stream yes. she's having uh, in, in yes. Twitch. So uh, th thank you, Natasha. We will continue thank a you. bit uh, yes. here. So, and then, Absolutely. Uh, you know. Have a beautiful time. And there is another hour. Uh, so no issue there, as Santeri said. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me. And looking forward again to uh, keep these discussions open and especially having community uh, growing even more. So thank you, cool. everyone. Be safe. Wash Good your hands. Day. Stay around. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, and uh, sorry, I'm gonna hijack this uh, conversation a bit <laughs> to, 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 to talk with uh, Dr. Adams. So uh, actually, uh, interesting. Uh, what I would like to know. So uh, you started with the uh, computer game uh, developer association, if I remember correctly. So, uh, mm -hmm. so how how did it like st st like started in in practice? So, uh, did you because like the the game industry in early nineties was way smaller, and uh, I, like in one Finnish perspective, it's like well non-existent. There was like a couple of companies happening uh, back then, but if they like the industry was so small, like in 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 US, so. And of course, like you know, like kids remember that was that the internet wasn't back then. It it, it wasn't like in, in in the 90s. So uh, so what, what what did you do in, in in the 90s to you know to start start uh, to get get all the people involved? Well, the the um, the game developers conference already existed. It began uh, earlier. It began in oh 19. Uh, 86, I think, mm -hmm. and it began very, very small. Um, but but by 1994, when I started the Computer Game Developers Association, um, we in th the conference had uh, 2,500 people attending. So it was really quite a lot of you know, well, a, a fair number of people attending, and and you know there were there were a lot of game companies. The the industry was very small, um, but there were a lot of game companies in California and in Texas and in uh, on the East Coast in Massachusetts and you know various places around the country, and these people came to the conference, and so um, we had a mailing list of people who came to the conference. And what I did is simply um, I, because I was one of the one of the owners of the conference, I used that mailing list and I sent out a letter to um, uh, to all the uh, all the people that ever came to the conference. And I said, I'm thinking of joining an, a professional association. You know, would you would you join a professional society if we had a professional society? Because the conference itself had no authority to speak for anyone it was just a meeting um and so um and that was that that mailing was very very successful 
um, a lot of people said, yes, I would like to join this organization. And we made sure that it was very inexpensive. And we also made sure that there were no barriers to entry. Um, an important rule for me when I set it up was, if you say you are a game developer, you are a game developer. There's no rule that says, you know, you must publish this many games or you must work for somebody or anything like that. You say, if you, because I wanted to encourage indie development <laughs> and I wanted to encourage students. And so we said, you know, you are a game developer if you say you are a game developer and you may join. Um, and, um, and we put out a, a newsletter that was a print, <laughs> a printed newsletter, believe it or not, <laughs> that everybody got a copy. And I think, um, uh, how often? I think we did it four times a year uh, with news about what was going on. And then, you know, we built one of the first websites, <laughs> you know, a very early website, because the, the web only came into existence about 1994. I mean, the internet existed, but but HTML was brand new, and so, um, and we were still using, uh, you know, Netscape Navigator. <laughs> um, uh, so that was, and then at the at the game developers conference, um, we also, of course, had signs encouraging people to join and explaining, you know, what we did. And we had a booth on the trade show floor and so on. And so, you know, we had a, we had a public presence at the industry's largest annual meeting. So that also got people to know about us. And as the conference grew, then the IGDA grew also. Um, and, um, at first, I really only thought of it as an American thing because we were first only concerned with American problems and American politics. But then more and more people got involved and, you know, we began creating chapters and so on. And um, it, it just continued to grow. And also very often in conjunction with universities because the students wanted to be involved. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's really nice to hear that the, the, well, the same principles are still uh, today, like, you know, well, you know, you don't need a degree to be a game developer. You know, if you want to be a game developer, you can be a game developer. And then oh, yeah. also would be like really interesting, uh, probably it doesn't available anymore, but, you know, the first ITDA page from 94 <laughs> would be <laughs> super interesting. <laughs> Uh, it was pretty primitive, <laughs> but you know, it's now become so much easier to become a game developer because we have game engines. Yeah, that's true. You know, in, in 1984, there was no unity. There was no unreal, you know, you had to write all the software right on the bare metal, as we say in English, <laughs> you, know? Um, you know, there was nothing to help you. Um, and so, you know, now it's, it's much easier to become a game developer. And, um, and, you know, and we have a variety of interesting other issues now because the way that we make and sell games has changed. You know, we now have mobile games and we sell games online and, you know, game shops are going away. Um, and most of game is doing uh, is through electronic distribution and that has made it so much easier for small independent developers. You know, you can make a game and put it on Steam and see if you can make some money. So um, the industry has grown a lot and, and changed. And I think um, the IGDA has grown and changed as well to go along with this, you know, this new um, approach. Mm -mm. That's, uh, <clears throat> uh, so we, we had uh, some, some discussion uh, earlier on and I was asking other panelists about the uh, from the, the like experience on working with ITDA, like is there like like nice memories or like you know like some some crazy in crazy thing what happened like event or this kind of like uh, uh, experiences? So do you do have any anything you share like from the from the from the from the history? Well, um, one of the the difficulties has always been that the IGDA doesn't have a lot of money, um, and that's partly because. Um, I was very concerned early on that we not be under the control of a big company. You know, if we would get a sponsor, then the sponsor would try to control us and they would try to use the IGDA to help sell their own products and so on. And I was very worried about this because 
at the time the industry was very um well the, the individual developers at least were very concerned about the power of large companies and they were afraid that you know they would they would try to take us over or use us for something so um you know so we didn't go to microsoft and ask for money <laughs> you know or any or you know or to electronic arts or anything like that and and that has meant that um when the chapters like the finland chapter have wanted to do something um it's been very much like when i founded the igda it was that's great but you have to do all the work <laughs> <laughs> um, because you can't go to the to the mother organization, the, you know, in 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 the United States, and say, "Hello, we would like to have ten thousand euros." You know, <laughs> the IGDA doesn't have ten thousand euros, so it it, it um, still has that very sort of individual, personal. Um, the English term is grassroots. Um, people people are are building it themselves. Um, from the ground up, and, you know, in the individual chapters, but but Finland has done this very very well. I have to say, <laughs> you have one of the biggest and most active chapters, um, and you've built it all yourself. Yeah, that you know, might also. Well, uh, I think like like Finns are like really well. We we be saying that Finland is a, like a promised land of associations, like really like kind of like by the book and <laughs> organized, and and uh, actually uh, on on that point. Um, uh, I uh, there was a earlier on discussion. Uh, the Jason Miller uh, was sending uh, messages from from Canada. So uh, if I may uh, hop on uh, that a little bit. So um, so a little bit like uh, the well, some of like statistics, uh, like like from the Finnish side. So yeah, Finland is the is the biggest and uh, well, probably the, the most active chapter uh, with uh, over two thousand uh, uh, paid members and. 13 uh, cities and uh, monthly meetings and 100 volunteers. Uh, also, well, you know, um, I have a background in, in, in Helsinki, so I can say that, uh, like in uh, Finnish, uh, no, the Helsinki gatherings, uh, they, they're usually in monthly, there's like around like 300, uh, you know, developers or, you know, uh, game game uh, enthusiasts uh, coming. And the, the biggest event uh, in Helsinki was, uh, around uh, 800 uh, somebody do i remember correctly so yes yes yeah so a hu huge wow. uh, so just like a <laughs> monthly thing and of course like without um, the, the, the like uh, you know uh, you know like like really really small small tight budgets and yeah so every every chapter and uh, location have to like you know build their own own future on that part but uh, actually, uh, there, there was a segue uh, with, with this. So, uh, so Jason Miller uh, was uh, was asking about uh, uh, that, uh, how how to get uh, people involved uh, with like the ITD gatherings or or meetups, uh, and and uh, so uh, so uh, like uh, people are might be shy to uh, to join uh, the, the meetups, or or uh, somehow they don't get a lot of people uh, going there. So uh, could you have some tips <laughs> and, and tricks? Like so, why why like these these uh, meetups are so popular in in Finland? Uh, so you know what, what, what's your magic sauce there? Uh, Sambo, Ria, can you share something? How could we help uh, uh, Jason Miller? Yeah, well, um, he w he was pointing out that you know students are a bit shy, and how to get people involved is uh, this is something that we've been thinking about a lot as well here in Helsinki. That you know we have a very diverse range of people from students to industry professionals, and how do we provide something that you know fits everybody and what we've been doing is that we have the the regular meetup where people get together and you know hang out so if that's the only thing that you want to do then that's that's what you can do but if you don't know people and you want to get to know people we have also the seminars that hey if if you want to come and get some learn something get some information from the from the industry uh you can come and check out the seminars if you don't want to stay for the gathering then you can go go and do what you want but there's there's different options there. So there's a seminar and there's just 
regular meetup hanging out. There's demo corners where people come and share their uh, game game uh, game progress or show demo their games. And one thing that we just recently started right before uh, the COVID thing started was uh, this thing we call chat corner. Uh, that's that's how we've been, you know, trying to get people to know each other, uh, kind of get rid of the barrier of, you know, going as, and especially as Finnish people, we, we're pretty shy people as well. Not, not just the students and Finnish people in general, are pretty, pretty quiet and shy. Uh, so we came up with this chat corner where, you know, you can come, come, come sit down. There's different topics that we come up. Uh, you, you talk to a stranger and then there's some, some person, you know, one of our volunteers, you know, coordinating it. And that has been a huge success. Like there's been tens of people, you know, just sitting together and I've been asking them that, how did you like this? Like, did you meet new people? And he, the young people are especially like, I just came here the first time and I met like 10 people. So that for the next time when you come, you know that, you know, hey, there's these 10 people I can go talk to again. And, you know, that makes it a lot easier. And especially for me as well, I'm a student. And when I came to IGDA, I'm, I'm not a very social person. I'm like, oh, you know, these are, you know, grown ups. How, how do I talk to grown ups? And these are industry professionals. What do I say? Like, I'm just a student. Uh, this is a great way to kind of, you know, s b smaller the gap of and get rid of the ba barrier there. So this chat corner has been working out really well. We also have this feedback wall where you can, you know, put some post-it notes, give some feedback, and from th that's how we learn from the community. So it, it's it's hard to, you know, know what the people want. So we kind of try to ask them and uh, instead of, you know, trying to figure it out ourselves. Chat corner, so different kind of, uh, stuff for everybody. Mm -mm. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'd like to add. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'd like to add that um, uh, in in uh, California, we used to have a local meetup in our. This was even before the IGDA started. Th that game developers would get together um, every month, and um, an important thing, especially for students, is food. Um, we we got together in the back room of a restaurant, uh, a pizza restaurant in particular, <laughs> and uh, they would let us have the room for free because they always knew that we would buy a lot of pizzas. And uh, it was very informal. Uh, you know, we sat around at the tables and we ate pizza and we talked and so on. And sometimes we would have a speaker who would be somebody and we didn't have a microphone and we didn't have, uh, we didn't even have a um, a screen for PowerPoint. Just somebody would come and talk about their experiences and, you know, things that they thought it would be useful for people to know. Again, very informal and relaxed, and everyone could, you know, ask questions and so on. Um, but I think uh, if you want to get people together and and you know you want them to be comfortable and enjoy themselves, um, then then giving them a place where they can eat <laughs> um, is always a is always a good thing, and especially students. You know, I, I I would like there to be an IGDA student chapter here in in Visby. I'm in, I'm in Visby on Gotland. Um, we don't have one yet, but if if we ever set one up, I'm going to make sure that our meetings are in a restaurant. I, I think like you know, uh, do you want to uh, help somebody to move uh, your, your your stuff? Or do you want to develop games? Beer and pizza. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> the exactly. magic sauce. Uh, but uh, Ria, uh, is there something uh, you want to add as well uh, for, like, you know, uh, how, how to get people interested? Yeah, actually, it was fun that Dr. Adams mentioned the food because that's the way we started. Uh, before we started the IGDA Hub here in Lahti, we uh, were working with the Game Changers project and we had. Um, bi-monthly or every third month a meetup and the first thing we started when setting up an event was okay what will we uh, eat so we always had free food and we uh, soon got to known to be the kind of like event that had uh, awesome <laughs> catering so that was definitely kind of like one of the key points and uh, because we have lots of student members uh, it was a big thing kind of like to have the location and time uh, such that students could attend and people who work could attend 
and also the fact that we provide some <coughs> delicious food. And actually, uh, to add to Sampo was telling about Helsinki uh, meetups, um, as said, there's like 300 people or 800 people, and it might be like super intimidating to go there. And in addition of the things that IGDA does, there's also uh, Women in Games Finland uh, pre IGDA meetups. So if you feel like you're kind of like part of minorities or you support diversity or you just want to sit before the main event in a restaurant, eat together, uh, dr maybe drink something and chat in a smaller group of like 20, 30, 40 people, then you can kind of like go to that type of event. And I think there's more uh, of those similar mm -hmm. uh, events. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, actually we have around 20 minutes still, still left here. Uh, so actually when I want to go uh, back on the questions uh, for the, you know, your, your uh, work and uh, with, with the association uh, and then there was already mention about like uh, to get the, that uh, you, you've been in, involved something like uh, really, really uh, in, interesting. So uh, how, how do you say, uh, has um, as thinking of like uh, your like a uh, career in the games industry uh do you see that the uh, icda has been helpful like uh well uh, that this volunteer work has been like hel helping you on your career or like otherwise uh you know I on, on your path so uh, uh let's uh, go uh, sambo i mean definitely um i've been i've been involved with it for my entire studies uh so about for the past three years and definitely it has been very helpful. Um, I've been, for example, I've been working on different projects, game projects at my school. Um, at IGDI, there's a bunch of people who already know a bunch of stuff of how to make video games. So I can, you know, I can talk to them like, hey, I have this kind of a problem that, hey, uh, what would you do here? You could, have you faced this kind of an issue before? And they're like, yeah, I mean, that's, that's easy. I'll handle that in five minutes. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's like, that's, that's this kind of communication and uh, culture that we have that we can talk to each other, share our problems and, you know, get help from each other uh, has been really great for me, especially with my school. Uh, and and the fact that I've been meeting a bunch of people already, even though I haven't even worked in a game company yet or haven't really even made a big game yet, uh, I've had the chance to talk to a lot of people and, you know, get to know the industry uh well, well in advance already. So kind of learning from other people before I make, even though those, I'm going to probably make a lot of mistakes myself as well, but it's good to learn from others as well. Uh, Ria? Yeah. Yeah, I cr agree with Sambo, like the community here in Finland has provided so much uh, encouragement and help and practical advice and uh, all sorts of things and it has really helped uh, my personal growth and also um, helped in developing the kind of like game industry scene here in Lahti. Uh, I have to mention that the uh, leadership day that was held in Helsinki uh, last year, yeah, uh, in the end of last year was kind of like one of the most amazing conferences that I've been. So kind of like the uh, small seminars that we have in Lahti or other local hubs or the little bit bigger seminars that Helsinki Hub is having monthly based and then these bigger events, they all go kind of like hand in hand and they provide uh, so so much kind of like information. So, and uh, Dr. Adams, yeah. uh, you want to share, uh, you know, well, of course it's well a bit different on your angle, but I, I, I guess uh, it's been like, uh, well, helping somehow. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, certainly uh, being able to say that <laughs> that I was the one who founded the IGDA has, has been good for my career, absolutely. Um, uh, you know, and and I I have to agree with with Sampo very very much about the the value of um, being able to get together with other people in an informal way and and just ask questions and ask the, them how they would solve problems and so on. Um, when when I started it up, um, companies were very um, 
very wary. They were very uh, uh, worried about people sharing trade secrets. And there were some, some companies that even would not allow their employees to attend the game developers conference because they said, you know, if you go there, then uh, so another company might try to hire you or you might, you might, um, you know, say something that's supposed to be a secret. And, um, uh, we really needed a way for people to be able to get together and just talk to each other as professionals in one place, um, you know, and, and, you know, not, not be so, so worried about the competition. You know, the, 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 we're, we really sort of transcend competition. And frankly, there aren't very many trade secrets that are so important <laughs> anyway in, you know, in video game technology. I mean, maybe if you work for somebody like Intel, um, but, but frankly, in, in game technology, you know, it, it's, you're not likely to create anything that's that big a deal. So, um, so just, just the, the, the chance to talk to other people is, is so huge. Um, and, and say, yeah, I've, I've got this issue. Um, you know, I, does anybody know how to deal with this and so on? And, um, you know, in, in, uh, in the early days of my game career, I would, I would go on to bulletin board systems. If anybody remembers bulletin board systems, <laughs> you know, and you can still now go and, and look on, on developer websites and things like that. But, um, but the IGDA, you know, it provides you with a, a group of people. And because you know, somebody is an IGDA member, you know, that they have the same kind of commitment that you do to sharing and being part of a community and so on. Um, and that's that creates a very positive feeling about being a game developer, and that that, that I think really helps um, people to feel feel confident about it. Yeah, there's uh, <clears throat> uh, there's been a lot of uh, mentions of like a lot of uh, activities activities what we had, but uh, Ria, you mentioned about the leadership day. Uh, can, can you tell me more, tell us tell us more about like what what was this uh, this IIG day leadership day? Yeah, I think Vesa, maybe you have more uh, kind of like details on that one. But uh, it was one day conference held in Helsinki. Uh, I think it was mainly streamed also. So if you weren't, um, for some reason, you couldn't attend uh, at the place, you could get the streams afterwards. And I think they are still uh, online and you can find them. Uh, there was a lot of people, uh, industry experts talking about their experiences and what they have learned and things that they wanted to share to kind of like help people forward in their own companies and in their own roles. Um, some companies might share kind of like their values and how that uh, bringing the values into the work can help actually make better products. And someone shared their insight about leadership and how to run more efficient and happy team and yeah, things like that. And in addition to the conference, there was also kind of like a evening party where you can relax and talk to other people and share so, yeah, like, the uh, experiences well, of the day. experiences like, uh, well, meetups or like in a bigger event for a bigger audience. So uh, actually, well, uh, talking about the, the international part. So um, have you been, um, involved with IGD activity like outside your chapter in in other other countries or or, or so uh let's go let's start start, start with samba yeah a bit a little bit but not that much um for example nordic game conference uh, i was there helping out um but and also uh in different kind of events within finland where there has been uh people from different countries coming along and you know, talking with them and uh, working with them. So, but other than that, I haven't been that much. I've been mainly focused on Helsinki uh, my, during my time at, at RGDA. Uh, Ria? Uh. Yeah, um, kind of like the same thing. I haven't been um, actively involved in the international scene, but uh, we have a bunch of Discord channels that uh, are kind of like for everyone in the world who are part of ICTA and those six are like super useful and um, 
yeah, I've been there in few different channels like uh, gaming. Uh, students yeah. and, uh, Dr. Adams, so you probably on. have um, a chance to visit uh, multiple uh, ITDA events, uh, I guess, on the, on the yes. Yes, I have, um, you know, and it's it's been really rewarding uh, to get a chance to see what people are doing in different countries and, and different places. You know, there's IGDA in London and, and um, you know, various branches uh, around the United States and, and so on. And, um, uh, and the the nice thing about the individual chapters is that they can focus on uh, local issues, whereas the the parent organization, of course, tries to be worldwide and and to do things that are of use to game developers everywhere. Um, but the individual chapters can work with the particular needs of the local developer community. You know, so if there's if there's a thing going on in your country that um, needs to be addressed, or that you need for someone to to speak up, for example, if there is a political issue or some other kind of um, question uh, having to do with with say workers' rights or with um, uh, women developers um, in your country, uh, for example, then um, the local chapter can can do that. And you know, this this kind of diversity uh, of geography. Um, is also a strength because it means that that uh, the the people who are working in a particular area can address the the issues that are that are meaningful to their area that the 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 main organization you know doesn't even necessarily know about you know if, if something um, unusual happens in in Nigeria <laughs> there, we're probably not going to find out about it in California so. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's really good to have this, and of course, the internet has changed everything so much because it just makes it so easy to you know to collect information in one place and to uh, put people together. And the fact that um, you know the the coronavirus now means that we have to do all this stuff online, um, and even that is very easy. I have to say that I'm actually finding um, this Deal Room app that we're using here. Uh, seems to work better than Zoom. <laughs> it's a surprise to me, um, uh, and and I'm pleased about that because <laughs> Zoom has been a problem for me. Good to hear. Um, uh, also, actually, that's a that's a really really uh, good good point uh, you have there. Like the 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 like uh, I, I, ITDA and well several other other uh, communities as well, but ITDA is like a really like networked uh, around around the globe, and and so it's uh, like. Um, how to say well easy easy way to get to know like yeah like what's happening in Finland what's happening in Silicon Valley London and and uh, these kind of places and get the reads uh, for for the community and and um, also uh, well uh, encouraging uh, for you know the, the audience so like you know uh, be in touch uh, with the ITD Finland you can find uh, more information from uh, itd.fi. Uh, if if you wanna you know uh, you know uh, set up some 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 something well you know cooperation uh, doing so then well uh, for the, the HQ you can find like itd.org uh, and and uh, uh, so uh, actually I I'm, I'm starting to steer this uh, this uh, conversation uh, to to the end so uh, if you still have like last questions put on the chat uh, we have still a short time to go those through. But in the end, uh, well, we've been talking a lot about uh, what is ITD doing and uh, you know personal perspectives and uh, how it's like you know doing good for the community and giving giving back. So um, uh, my my question is uh, for for all, all of all of you is like uh, would you you know encourage. Uh, people to join uh, this this uh, this uh, ITD activities, and and uh, you know and uh, how would you get you know started? Uh, how, how do you you know uh, can can join? So can we start like from somewhere again? Sure. I mean, uh, just Google if your city has a local IGDA hub. Uh, if so. Uh, just go there. I mean, just check when they have their next meetup uh, scheduled. Go there, talk to people. Hey, uh, I would like to meet some people, or maybe if you want to get involved with IGDA, I would maybe like to volunteer. Uh, is there something that I could do? Maybe I'm interested in doing this. I have these kind of skills. Maybe I could help help with these kind of stuff. 
uh, just talk to people and uh, you're good to go. I mean, that's that's how I got involved. I I, I knew someone. Hey, come along, uh, come uh, come hang out, and let's see what where this goes. And just be open and uh, ready for some new experiences. Cool, uh, Ria. Yeah, um, I think the first uh, access point is that go to icda.fi. You can find all the Finnish hubs there. There's also a calendar that shows you where the next event will be. Um, uh, in Lahti and in Helsinki, and I think um, in all of our hubs, you don't need to be ICTA member to come to the events. So if you are not sure if this is for you, come and see uh, what type of uh, things we do and uh, I think once you come there you can see that we are just people it's not kind of like you don't need to give a presentation or you don't need to sell yourself or anything like that we are just a bunch of ordinary people talking about um, something we all love something we do and uh, you will find your place. Uh, if you like to talk, you can talk. Uh, if you want to be more quiet, you can sit and listen. And there's not kind of like um, something that you have to do. But once you are kind of like attending the events, uh, I also encourage you to join the organization as a member. The fee is like tiny, tiny, tiny amount of money, like 20 euros, 40 euros, something like that in a year. And with that money, you can kind of like guarantee that your local hub can organize all the um, awesome events Dr. Adams, for you. Uh, you want to add something? Yeah, you know, it occurs to me that, that one of the things that happens um, uh, at our at our university that, that is, a, is a problem we need to solve is that our students in their classes are normally working in little teams um, and they're building games um uh, as part of their class um and they solve problems within their team but they don't necessarily talk to each other because the each team is very busy on its own thing and so you know of course the, the teachers try to help everybody but um if if we could have communication between the teams then you know then people would be able to say oh i you know i'm i'm trying to do this and where i'm having a problem with that and you know you could come and ask somebody else you know a different team that you normally would not talk to um you know can can i get can i get uh, some advice about this and people would normally be very happy to share and that's just so useful and yes i i really want to um uh uh second what what ria says about the um the importance of, of being welcoming and low key, um, you know, just um, just relax. Nobody has to try to sell themselves or to you know look um, look like they're somebody important or anything like that. Because that's you know that's not the way the organization was initially set up. We do want to you know come across as ordinary people just talking to each other and having a good time and learning things and um, doing something that is useful for each other in a way that is free from competition it's free from hierarchy um you know and like i say we're all game developers <laughs> and, you know and it, it doesn't matter whether you're john romero um, or you're a total newbie um, you know, John Romero um, doesn't get anything more special or more power um, than anybody else in the IGDA, and and neither do I. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm uh, I started it, but I'm now just an ordinary member. I'm not even on the board of directors. Um, you know, and uh, I'm very happy to share what I know with anybody, just as much as I'm happy to learn from other people. So, um, yeah, I, it's, I think it's, it, to get new people to come, it is important to emphasize that everyone is welcome. You know, everyone is welcome. And that's, that really makes a difference, especially to people who are shy. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's true. Uh, that, uh, and uh, what we want to really underline is that everybody's welcomed. And from my own history, uh, my first uh, ITDA, gathering was uh, around 2006 
and uh, I was super scared, uh, you know. Uh, but you know, when I eventually got got to the e- e- event, uh, the you know the, the first people I started chatting, like you know, like you know, we were like all old friends, and you know, start talking about games and these kind of things, and so, and uh, well, you know that that uh, one event happened to uh, you know, and now you know, like. For 14 years later on, I'm still still here. So, <laughs> as, as an example, mm. and, and uh, the, the the flat hierarchy uh, is is really good. And uh, if 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 you wanna be a rock star, maybe that's not the place, you know, to you know kind of start showing off. But the, the the sharing and caring and 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 good friends and developers to each other. And uh, but yeah, and um, so but uh, like uh, on the fin- finish side, what I can say is like the events are free. Uh, you know, you don't have to have a you know super CV uh, to get in. Like uh, everybody who is interested of the game game development uh, can 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 join the events. And there's a lot of events uh, you know around around Finland, but also around the world. Like uh, also like w- when we will have once again like a. Uh, uh, game developers conferences and these kind of like events uh, around the world there usually is like some kind of ITDA events uh, happening uh, there as well and you know you you know probably meet you know one of uh, us us here are, are uh, like uh, other ITDA uh, well uh, members and organizers uh, through the globe uh, I think we are heading to the end now uh this is some something somebody want to share uh still on uh, the next uh, four minutes uh, what were you talking about before i came <laughs> um. <laughs> uh we, we, we were going through uh the the, the introductions and uh the um, what is uh well uh, the finland activity and uh mostly like uh, mm. what uh, how people work in the igda and and uh, some you know fun fun memories uh, from the from the past and uh, well roughly this uh, well general stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. And and uh, yeah. Uh... I actually could mention because Fesa, you said that when you went to your first ICTA event that you were scared and. Uh, uh, it was same with me when I went to my first event. I was like, "Oh, oh my God, is is this the place for me? Um, maybe I'm kind of like maybe everyone will see that I'm not actually working in the game industry at the moment, and I'm just a project worker or something like that." But uh, I went there. Uh, I went to the par- bar and was like, "Okay, can I have a Coca Cola?" And then the person next to me had an awesome shirt with some. Um, logo from some game and I was like oh nice t-shirt and then we talked like 20 minutes and uh, when uh, the person heard what I was doing uh, they were like okay have you met this and this and kind of like after the one night I knew 10 people that I had never met and it was only because I commented on the shirt so it's it's really that easy you just go there and things you start have to a common passion you. You know, we all have a common enthusiasm and yeah, and it doesn't really matter how much you have done or how much, you know, how new you are. There's always something. I mean, we can always talk about games. (laughs) We can always talk about games that we like. We can always talk about games that we have problems with. We can always talk about games that we could improve. (laughs) So, yeah, yeah, we, we already have. Uh, a, a community just through our interest in this and our desire to make it better. So that's one of the things that makes it easy to talk to people and wearing a shirt yeah. <laughs> that, has a, that has something on it, well, you know, tells you. And right certainly there's, yeah. there's uh, all, all, awesome people uh, around and there never been, there never has been a fight or anything like that in in, in my memory of what I've been past uh, 15 years. So uh, it, it's great. And uh, Sambo, you want to uh, say something uh, for, for the uh, end of this panel? I mean, just to just to double on that, that I, when I first went to China, for a couple of events, I, I was just, you know, doing the volunteer stuff, but I didn't really talk to people that much because, you know, I was afraid. And I, then at some point I asked one of the one of the people that, like, what, what, what do I say? Like, what do I talk to people about? And he was like, what, video games? I'm like, 
that was kind of like you know a light bulb went off on in my head like i mean yeah everybody here plays video games why wouldn't i speak with about video games so just talk about video games yeah so yeah and people appreciate the volunteers too i mean if you are doing work to set things up if you are putting out the drinks <laughs> you know and arranging the chairs and so on it, you know people will say thank yeah, you yeah and everybody has been there at some point during their lifetime you know the when you're starting up so everybody can relate to your situation if you're a beginner yeah <laughs> yeah and i guess like like also the <clears throat> there's there's been so many volunteers kind of like going through organizers uh, like in the history of ICD Finland. So I guess like in at least on every major company, there's somebody who knows like, you know, <laughs> like what, what is to do uh, this uh, community work. Okay, uh, we still got uh, uh, 60 seconds. Uh, should we say bye bye? Last words. <laughs> ICD, awesome. Yeah. Take it out. <laughs> Thank Take you contact. so much for inviting me. I'm so sorry that I didn't... Uh, these things happen. So, and, um, thank you so, so thank much, you. Uh, Ernest, and I'm uh, uh, Sampo Tuisku. Thank you very much. Year round. And thank you for the audience. Thank you for the audience. Thank you for ga Game Break Online. Thank you. It was awesome to participate. And... Have a great summer. And... And as Vesa said and if earlier, I did everything remember to wash your hands. The <laughs> broadcast safe. should be off right now. But don't take your shirt off. <laughs> all right, hey, thank you guys. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, yeah. Thank, thank you. Uh, Leave the room yeah. and then uh, have, have a nice oh. hello Thursday. Oh. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yes. <laughs>